Hey everyone, Doc Allie here today to have a very candid discussion about imposter syndrome. Stay tuned. So, this is actually off schedule. I plan to release another Tackling Disparities video today, but the reason that I felt I had to switch lanes really quickly again was because it was touching my heart because I recognized that I was probably having an imposter syndrome moment myself. And so therefore I was like, let's talk about it. We need to talk about it. People aren't talking about it enough. I was reading one paper that even said like, there needs to be more research. People aren't doing research. I guess they just don't care. And it's sad because imposter syndrome is so common. I think they said about 70% of adults will experience it in their lives. You can be a college student, you can be a graduate student. It's very common in graduate students, but you can even be an established professional. You can be already working in your career field and still suffer from imposter syndrome. So that's why we're talking about it. Imposter syndrome was first basically defined by a psychologist named Dr. Pauline Clarence. And she described it as people who never feel deserving of their success. They always point to an external reason they can never internalize it. And so therefore they feel that eventually people will realize that they are an imposter. In other words, not meant to be there, not meant to be doing what they're doing, but they're there. Um, and so what they actually discovered is that people who struggle with imposter syndrome will either be one of two ways. They're going to be the type to try to overcompensate because they believe that they're not supposed to be doing what they're doing. So when they're assigned a task, they're going to do like above, you know, the necessary in order to be successful in their minds. And then there's those who can't handle the anxiety that comes with the task. And therefore they procrastinate like crazy because they feel like they are undeserving of their success. So maybe by chance, you're struggling with imposter syndrome, but you didn't know it because you didn't know what to attach to it. So let me point out a few characteristics you might actually find within yourself so that you can know that you're not, you don't have to struggle with this on your own. You don't have to do it all by yourself. So Clarence defined six common characteristics. There's the imposter cycle. You know, you work really hard for that goal. You achieve the success. You're like, oh, I mean, I guess I was lucky. I was blessed. And then you, go back to um, the new task is assigned, you go through the whole cycle again, and it's just like a never ending cycle of never feeling worthy, never feeling like you've achieved anything, never feeling like you're meant to do this or be where you are. There's also the problem where the person will feel um, that they have to be the best and they will like do the, like they feel like a failure if they're not the best, maybe not at the top of their class, whatever it may be at the top of their job. Um, there's the superwoman man aspect where they have to feel like they have to do everything all at once, like trying to do too much to prove their worth. Um, there's the people who fear failure. There's the people who deny their competence and their abilities. And then there's the people who feel that success isn't really theirs. They shouldn't have it. They're fearful of the success. The reason that it's so important to have this discussion, the reason that there needs to be more research behind it is because medical school students, like I'm going to keep talking about medical school students because I'm a medical school student. I struggle with imposter syndrome, you know, like, but it's broad, it's everyone, anyone can have imposter syndrome, right? But the problem with imposter syndrome is the mental health effects it has on you. These students will suffer more from depression, more from anxiety. Um, I think they said that this can affect your self-esteem. Obviously, if you feel like you're, you know, not worthy to get an A on an exam, like how do you really think and feel about yourself? And that's why I wanna to talk to you guys about what I'm doing to work through these feelings. And I'm gonna give you some experiences and some ideas to really know like how this has been affecting my life. So please grant me the grace that I hope that I appropriately communicate this next topic of selling yourself short. And this is something that like when it happened, when I had this incident with my friend, Stephanie, I was telling her I just aced my exams. I was so happy, so excited. And I was, because of my religious background, giving all the glory and honor to God. And um, Stephanie kind of took a step, like she didn't want to step on my toes. She didn't want to disrespect my religion. She was literally just telling me, you also worked really hard 
And for some reason that couldn't register with me. I didn't internalize it. I didn't notice like, yeah, you know, I cried a lot. I worked really hard. And so I just like, and that was like one of the first moments where I realized like, why, why can't I acknowledge when I do try hard? And I'm not trying to take away any credit or glory from God. If you have any religious background, your higher entity, if you don't, whatever, I'm not taking it away from him. I'm basically just saying that I was also blessed with the brain and the mindset and the abilities and the work ethic. And so it wasn't that I'm useless. It wasn't that I can't do anything. It wasn't just like thrown at me. Like it was an altogether cohesive, you know, reward basically lots of people struggle with competition and making sure that their competition is healthy a lot of people assume um, their competitor to be basically their enemy their opposite whatever and they don't make it into a healthy relationship I know I struggle with making sure that it's a healthy relationship because I'm actually an athlete a former athlete so like that competitive nature in me to just have to win to want to win to need to win like ugh. It's not healthy. So <laughs> what I was looking at, because you know, I'm trying to help myself and you guys, is I was looking at how do you deal with competition? And one of the main things is stop comparing yourself to another person because A, you're not that person. And also, if you do recognize someone's able to make better grades than you in a certain subject, if someone has a certain skill set that you wish you could improve on, you don't have to just hate them from across the room. You can ask them, hey, can you help me with this? Can I see how you do that? And then they're not really your competition anymore. It's more like a mentor, right? So don't compare and don't make everything a competition. That's my advice on that. Tips. This is number three, okay? Um, <laughs> basically, I recognized... Um, during the time I told you guys about how at one point in my life I was so busy on trying to make good grades I was so busy trying to make A's that I basically neglected self-care I neglected getting groceries neglected laundry neglected cleaning my room like I was a mess and while I'm sitting there distressed recognizing how worried I got about bad practice test scores not even real test scores practice test scores I had to ask myself, why? Why are we so big out of shape? And I came to the realization, and I'm so grateful that I did, that I attach my self-worth to my scores, to my education. If I'm not getting the best scores, if I'm not getting A's, if I'm not doing the best that I possibly can, then in my head, I'm a failure. And so I learned that I have to detach my self-worth from my sports, from your job, from whatever it is that you're struggling with. You have to detach yourself from that. And for me, I had to come back to my core and my identity. For me and my religion, my core and my identity comes from God. So whatever it may be in your life, I don't know what you're going to have to go back to, what core identity you're gonna have, family values, family name, whatever it is. You have to go back to that when you start feeling like you're a failure, when you start thinking that you're not supposed to be here, you're not supposed to be doing this. You have to go back to your core. And lastly, you know, I need you guys to talk about it. If you need to talk to a therapist, if you need to talk to a trusted friend, um, you know, I've had my imposter syndrome moments so much on these clinical rotations, you know. I really struggle with accepting the fact that my hard work has got me this far, you know? I, I, for some reason, I just can't accept it. And so when I get there, I feel like, you know, if I don't answer this question right, I'm stupid, I'm dumb. And I struggle so much on having to tell that voice in my head to be quiet and let me do my best. And so I'm thankful to God that I've had the attendings that I've had that are patient with me, that are reassuring me constantly, you know, telling me that I'm doing well, that I'm gonna be great. Um, they're happy to see me as a physician. Like, it's, when they talk to me, it's no doubt about my future. But when you talk to me, I, and like, I won't outright say it, but there is doubt, you know? I do struggle with the idea of me finally becoming a doctor someday. Um, not because of anything other than 
I don't really, I struggle with accepting how I've gotten success so far. So my thing is, this is my last tip to you guys, is talk about it. Don't struggle with it on your own. I don't want anybody to have to struggle with imposter syndrome by themselves. I want you guys to know that there are ways to living with it, coping with it, making it through. I really want to see you guys journey to becoming MD. So it's not when I created this channel, it wasn't just about, oh, you know, I want to be on YouTube talking about my life story. I really know that there's people out there who need this and that's why I'm doing this. So I hope that if you guys are struggling with imposter syndrome, you don't keep quiet about it. You don't struggle with it on your own. You talk about it and you work through it. Okay. Until next time.